Hello and welcome everybody to another exciting episode of Site Talks 2.0. As always, my name is Dr. Jack Saxanian, and in today's topic, I want to focus on Alzheimer's disease and dementias, and specifically focus on the immunotherapies or vaccination approaches that are being tried to battle this devastating disease. I want to give a quick update on some of the ongoing clinical trials, the successes and the failures, and what is being done to overcome some of these failures in the clinical trials in order to best optimize these vaccination approaches in helping treat this devastating disorder. But before we get on to, to the clinical trials and these approaches, I want to give a quick background on what is Alzheimer's disease and what is the disease pathology and how is that information being used to design these immunotherapies or vaccinations. So if one were to look inside the brain of an Alzheimer's patient, what we will find are the two classic pathological hallmarks of the disease. One of them is called A-beta plaques, and the other one is the tau tangles. The A-beta plaques are formed when there is an improper processing of a naturally existing protein called APP. When APP is normally cleaved, it gets processed in its long form. In the case of Alzheimer's disease, this improper processing leads to the cleavage of the protein and formation of its smaller form. The small form of the protein called beta amyloid aggregates together to form this insoluble plaque called the A-beta plaque. The tau tangles, on the other hand, are formed when a naturally existing protein found inside of the cells called tau is hyperphosphorylated. Tau is normally used to stabilize structures called microtubules. The microtubules are used by the cell to transport proteins throughout its cell body. The hyperphosphorylated tau causes this entanglement of the microtubules and the formation of tangles of tau protein. Together, the A-beta plaque and the tau are very toxic to the surrounding cells and cause increased inflammation and cell death. The sum result of all of this increased inflammation and cell death leads to shrinkage of specific areas of the brain in an Alzheimer's patient. This includes the hippocampus and the cortex. The consequence of all of this cell death is that the patient develops the symptoms that we normally associate with Alzheimer's patient. This includes decline in their cognitive function, inabilities to do their daily tasks and chores, and they begin to lose memory. And as the memory begins to fade and the person loses its sense of location and time, a lot of these patients develop the depression and begin to isolate themselves from their loved ones and families and from their surrounding. So how are vaccines being used to combat this disease? Well, the theory behind vaccination is to boost the immune system to produce what are called antibodies against these A-beta plaques and tau tangles. The idea is that when these antibodies enter the brain, they will remove these toxic A-beta plaques and tangles from the brain. And as a result, they will slow down the progression of the disease. Based on the success of preclinical studies in animal models, there have been over 11 clinical trials that have been launched. Although the preclinical studies have been very, very promising, some of these clinical trials have met with limited success. Others have been forced to be shut down altogether, and the reason for shutting them down is that the patients developed severe adverse effects, and therefore the clinical trial had to be abandoned altogether. Now, the reason for the limited success in some of these other uh, clinical trials, which are still ongoing, has mainly two reasons. One of them is that... Um, First of all, these initial clinical trials targeted either the A-beta plaques or the tau tangles, but the newer forms of vaccinations 
are able to target both of these proteins simultaneously. And moreover, in the newer clinical trials, the mixture in which these uh, vaccines are being made is tweaked a little bit in order to give better efficiency of the vaccination's ability to work. So with these changes, the hope is that in the next year or so, when these preclinical studies are launched into a clinical trial phase, that we will get a better efficacy of these vaccination strategies. The second, and I think the more important reason for some of the failure of these clinical trials is that by the time we intervene in these patients, the disease prog has progressed way too far. And therefore, the vaccine, even if it could work, it has a minimal effect. So the best thing to do is to be able to diagnose these patients earlier on and be able to intervene at a very early stage. And indeed, when these kinds of studies have been done where the vaccines have been administered at the very early stages of the disease, the results are much, much, much more promising and much more effective. Therefore, one of the important things that needs to be developed in order to intervene early are biomarkers which can detect the onset of the disease way before we see clinical symptoms. And in fact, there are many studies and strategies, and strategies that are currently ongoing in order to find either blood biomarkers or imaging studies where we can essentially detect the onset of the disease before it is too late. And with this ability to detect the disease early, I think with the vaccination approaches, we would be able to see that their effect, their efficacy is much more um, profound. Now, the other use of vaccines would be to actually prevent an individual from ever developing a dementia or Alzheimer's disease. Just like how we use vaccinations to prevent individuals from getting sick, for example, from the polio or measles or rubella, we can use these vaccination methods to actually prevent people from getting Alzheimer's disease. And so those individuals who, based on their genetics or family history, are more susceptible to developing Alzheimer's could actually be vaccinated and therefore prevent them from ever getting the vax, uh, from ever getting the, the disease. Now, what are the caveats of the vaccination strategies? Well, the underlying baseline assumption is that these A-beta plaques and tangles are actually the cause of the disease. In fact, this is not fully established. Some people believe that the A-beta plaques are actually a defense mechanism that the body uses to fight and slow down the progression of the disease. And therefore, uh, whether this is a cause or consequence of the disease still needs to be worked out. Now, given this, uh, whether removing the A-beta plaques is a good thing or a bad thing still needs to be um, worked out. But having said that, so far in all of the studies that have been done where the A-beta plaques and tangles are removed from the brain, the animals seem to do a lot better, both in terms of their cognitive abilities and also in tasks that are involved in memory, recall, and formation. Therefore, <clears throat> the studies still need to address the cause and consequence, but in the meantime, developing these vaccinations seems to be a good strategy in order to slow down the progression of the disease. So in the future, hopefully these vaccinations will be able to hold to their promise and slow down the progression and like I mentioned earlier even prevent the formation of Alzheimer's in certain susceptible individuals. So hopefully you guys have learned something about these vaccination immunotherapies and can inform your loved ones or people that you know about some of the ongoing clinical trials that are aimed at slowing down the progression of Alzheimer's or dementias in general. With that, I want to thank you for your time and want to wish you a wonderful day.